Um, and I didn't have to write it out in this kind of form over here. If you can do it in your head, that's fine too. You just want to show you clearly what's going on, right? So that's uh, multiplication by a scalar and subtraction of vectors as well. Part three is going to be a little bit different. For part three, we're going to find the magnitude and direction of A plus B. And so I mentioned earlier the formulas that are involved, but what are actually these things? For the magnitude, you can think about the length of the vector. And for the direction, you can think about um, the angle of the vector that it creates. And these are actually also how we define vectors, right? Because this line over here, how do you kind of define it? Well, it's got some length. And it's got that arrow there, so it's pointing in a particular direction. Right? And that's actually what defines a vector. It's not actually the position of the Cartesian plane. You can move a vector all the way around, and it doesn't actually change its length or it, where it's pointing to. If you just literally pick up the arrow and move it around the Cartesian plane, that's actually the same vector. Okay? Now, um, the formulas I'm involved already, I mentioned were Pythagoras' theorem and tan. Um, let me explain a bit about what's going on there. So first of all, a plus b, what's that going to look like visually? Well, we have an idea of what that looks like visually. Um, it was this yellow vector over here, and I'm not sure if yellow comes up super clearly for you guys, so I'll just draw it out like that. So we've got uh, 1 and negative 4 over here, if that wasn't clear. Right? And so for the magnitude, why is Pythagoras' theorem useful? Well, if you have a look at it, right, what you've actually created is just a right angle triangle. So you can see why um, now the magnitude should be calculated using Pythagoras' theorem, using its kind of horizontal and vertical components. Because you've got this length here of 1, this length here of 4. Right? So um, for the magnitude, what I'm going to do, and the way in which we write that, we use these kind of absolute value symbols, um, because the absolute value and the magnitude are very closely related. A plus B we have over here. That's going to be the square root of the horizontal component, so 1 squared, plus uh, the vertical component, negative 4 all squared. Uh, and so that's going to be square root of 17 by the looks of it. So that's the magnitude. Now in terms of the direction, direction is a little bit trickier because, well, first of all, how do you define direction, like where it's pointing? Um, and it depends on the situation because um, if you're thinking about the Cartesian plane, typically we let this horizontal axis here, if you think about your unit circle, we let this guy be zero degrees, right? So if that guy is zero degrees, then um, I'm going all the way around over here and I'm creating a pretty big reflex angle if I want it to go all the way around like that. Okay, how are we going to find that angle? Well, going back to our right angle triangle idea, if I just have theta over here, right, and that's my theta angle, then I can actually use trig to do that. You've got this vertical component and you've got this um, horizontal component. And I guess a formula in some sense for the direction um, would be that theta, the angle that you're looking for, can be found using inverse tan of uh, the vertical divided by the horizontal, so y on x, if you'd like. Right? And for a and b, that's going to be inverse tan of negative 4 on 1. Now, when you put that in your calculator, let's double check this one, you're going to get negative 75 degrees and let's round here, 58 minutes. Right? What does that actually mean, though? Well, because this angle here is clearly positive, and it's because you've used the negative 4 value up here. If you were just to take the positive value, you'd find out this angle here is 75 degrees and 58 minutes, right? But in terms of a direction, we don't typically leave it in terms of the negative there, right? First of all, the direction is not 75 uh, degrees and 58 minutes. That's just the size of this angle. So the direction, you'd have to consider it in this context over here, from 0 to 360. So we're taking this angle away from 360. All right, and that's going to give me 284 and 2 minutes. So the, therefore, the direction is 284 degrees and 2 minutes. There's a few other ways you can represent direction there because um, if you have the context where it's you know, compass bearings, then you may be thinking this here is north, which then we treat that as zero degrees, and you have to find the angle respectively. Or if you're looking for compass bearings, you have to think, consider, okay, from south to east, what's that going to be? Um, so it's all kind of contextual. This is um, potentially an acceptable one. Um, I typically write the direction from zero to 360. Um, I think the issue is that there's no sort of defined standard. It's gonna depend on the question. 
um, that they give you. So it's, it's going to be contextual. Either way that you write it, just kind of make it clear um, what you're doing and why. Right? If you're writing compass bearings or true bearings, make sure you write that out because maybe the situation asks for that. Um, but um, I usually leave my direction from uh, 0 to 360.